Natarajan, the Dean Faculty of Science, who also uh, initiated this a uh, couple of months ago. So it, it, it's a time that uh, I could uh, share some of my experience and some of my knowledge on the postgraduate scholarship opportunities in Australia. Uh, I did my best to cover all the scholarships. Uh, as you know, this is a very wide, wider topic and I will focus uh, the main uh, scholarships that's available in Australia. Uh, so today's talk uh, is actually my own views uh, from my experience and knowledge. So my views are not necessarily belongs to my institutions uh, which I work here. There is no unique and consistent system in this world, but there are equivalent system exist and each and every country proud of their own system. So everything is relative and comparison and depend on the, on the particular situation. So these are the general facts we all uh, aware of. So the education in Australia, as you probably know that uh, the population of Australia is about 25 million. Uh, comparable to the population of Sri Lanka. See, Australia, officially a Commonwealth of Australia, is a country uh, comprising about uh, uh, comprising six independent states and two uh, independent territories. So we have uh, it's a big country, but we have separate states. The states have uh, independent status, like the separate countries almost. Only the foreign affairs, defense, and certain uh, areas, diplomatic things are uh, running by the central government, but other matters are all uh, uh, distributed to the states. So there are about 43 universities in Australia, 42 uh, in the last, uh, I think 2018, and there is a new university started a few years ago. So there are 43 universities, 40 Australian uh, public universities, and two international, uh, three private universities and two international universities. And uh, eight, out, eight out of 100 top universities in the world are Australian. Uh, when it comes to the world university ranking, Australia has a strong proven track record across all global ranking systems, criteria and field of study. Australia, uh, ranks highly for equality of education, student satisfaction, and global reputation. Australian educational institution may be relatively young compared to the university, uh, universities such as UK's Oxford or the US Harvard, but they are, they are up they are with the best in the world. So the University of Melbourne, Australian National University, University of Sydney, University of Queensland, University of, of New South Wales, and the Monash University, which I work, were all ranked in top of the 100 universities in the world. So you can see here uh, the different universities uh, in different states. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there are 43 universities uh, in all the uh, six states and two territories. So the quality indicators for learning and teaching, uh, student surveys make it possible to compare higher education institutions and study areas based on the results of thousands of surveys completed by current and former domestic and international students. So the well-being of all interna international students, uh, the quality of students' education experience, the provision of up-to-date and accurate information are available for, for each uh, and every university. The, our quality assurance uh, of the Australia uh, has the National Regulatory and Quality Agency for Higher Education. It was established by the Australian government to monitor the e quality and, the, and, and also regulate university and non-university higher education providers. Uh, again, uh, there are set up standards developed by the independent higher education standard panel. So why Australia is, the, is one of the best country to provide the quality education. So Australia has the world 12th largest economy and it had 
features in world top 20 highest percent uh, capital income in the International Monetary Fund. So Australia is currently home to nearly about 700,000 international students. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling before the COVID pandemic uh, time, uh, so roughly about 700,000 students. Um, seven of the best student cities in the world are in Australia. And uh, Australian cities are consistently ranked as some of the most livable cities in the world. Uh, and the quality of education, healthcare, transport, infrastructure, government services are rated well at the international uh, standard. So it's one of the best places for, for higher education. So <clears throat> Australia has an outstanding higher educational system with over 22,000 courses across 110, in, 100, uh, about 100, 000, uh, 100, about 1,000 institutions. That includes universities and TAFEs and technical institute, et cetera. Uh, from the uh, 1945 prize for the discovery of penicillin uh, to the most recent prize in 2017 for the Nobel Prize for the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons are uh, being uh, uh, <clears throat> from the Australian graduates. Uh, I think um, about there are about uh, 10 Nobel laureates who were either studied in Australia or or were Australians. So international student report almost 90% satisfaction scores for their living and study experience in Australia, according to the, the, the highest Department of Education International Survey. While studying, the student can work up to 20 hours per week during the semester and full-time during the semester break. So this can be a great way to find study related work or simply pay for your lifestyle in Australia. So the Australian educational institution makes students work ready-made and understand what it takes to succeed in the global workforce. Before we start, it is important to mention that scholarships in Australia are divided into two different categories. So one is the government scholarships. The other one is the university scholarships. However, taking into consideration that Australian universities consistently uh, rank among the top in the world, it is given that these scholarships are highly competitive. But with the right qualification, you will, give it, you will be able to get one of those scholarships. So ultimately, I will discuss a bit later um, how to make a successful application. There are a lot of uh, criteria to be satisfied. I, I will go through one by one. And these slides show you roughly how much the cost uh, for the tuition fees and how much for the living expenses and insurance, travel, et cetera. These are kindly a, a roughly a rough idea. It slightly varies between universities because as you know, in Australia, all universities are independent. They are not dependent on each other, not like the uh, system in Sri Lanka. So all universities can make their own tuition fees or own you know, criteria and things like that. So scholarship in Australia for international students. As I mentioned before, scholarships are extremely competitive and uh, one of the top scholarship is the Australia Award Scholarship uh, provided by the Australian government. Um, it has a, it's a very comprehensive scholarship, uh, such as Commonwealth Scholarship or Fulbright Scholarship or Mumbusho Scholarship in Japan or DAT scholarship in, uh, Scholarships in Germany. Australia Awards is one of the best in the world. Um, and apart from that, there are various other scholarships has been provided by the Australian government. The one is called the, the Australian government New Mobility Program for domestic and international students to study regional Australia. That means you have to study in the regional uh, Australian areas, not in the main cities. 
if you are happy to go into that areas, then there are spe specific international scholarships are available. Since uh, 2017, uh, the research training program replaced the international postgraduate research scholarship. Earlier it called IPRS. It's very similar to the uh, UK uh, system. So it covers tuition fees and health, health insurance or health cover. There are other type of scholarships, educational institution scholarship. That means the universities provide their own scholarship managed by the respective university that covers living cost and partial tuition fees. And also there are a number of other organizations. Uh, they are specifically targeting certain group of people, uh, particularly women, uh, disability, and, and also specific to certain countries, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Pacific Islands and, and Vietnam or, or some, some special relationship with Australia. And the other type of scholarships are coming from research grants. So these slides actually summarized uh, what scholarships are available in Australia. So I think you should focus on these slides in this particular slide to see how you are fitting into this, uh, the different scholarships. As I mentioned before, Australia award scholarships are very comprehensive. It covers everything, including, you know, the accommodation, tuition fees, health cover, insurance, and all including, it covers your family members. Uh, for for your, if you have kids, it also covers kids' expenses. So other scholarships are, not very comprehensive. I can say it is a partial scholarships. But if the university accept you as a student, then you can cover the scholarship with, with the different resource, different sources. Like for example, if you get a scholarship from the university, the university scholarship, then you they will also make you to get the, the research training provided by the Australian government. So there are various options available. Uh, then I, at the end, you can ask questions if you don't uh, understand the slides and the, and the very complicated, uh, you know, the scholarships uh, uh, descriptions. So uh, the popular scholarships in Australia, the most popular scholarship, as I already mentioned, the Australia Award Scholarship, it's very highly competitive, but it can be achievable easily. I will explain later how can we, uh, how can you make a very successful application. The next popular, popular scholarships are the ones that are provided by the individual university and then the research training program uh, scholarships that is funded by the Australian government. And as I mentioned, the scholarships targeted certain groups. So this slides also summarized uh, uh, well from the, from the previous slide. So this is the RTP scholarship. Uh, actually, this is uh, covered by the uh, Commonwealth of Australia uh, uh, under the Higher Education Support Act 2003. So there are no restriction that would prevent someone without first class owners from receiving a scholarship. So please don't expect that you need to have first class owners to get the scholarship. I will explain a bit later. The, the class of degree is important, but that is not the all uh, the you know sole requirement to get the scholarship. There are various aspects uh, is is uh, contributing to be successful. So uh, as I mentioned before, the RTP scholarships uh, again provided by the Australian government uh, covers RTP fees offset. So fees offset mean this pays uh, for the tuition fees uh, of a higher degree by research, either masters by research or PhD. It's only for the research uh, degrees, not for the taught courses. Uh, the, uh, the Australian scholarship, Australia Award Scholarship covered both taught course master's program and the PhD and the uh, research master's program. I will explain a bit later about the Australia Award. So now I focus now RTP scholarship. So RTP scholarship not only pay uh, fees offset, but also uh, the RTP stipend, that stipend help students to manage their living expenses. But this is only, uh, you know, um, 
you can manage by a single strength. You can't uh, uh, get the support for your family. And also, <clears throat> there are some allowances uh, given as part of this RTP scholarship, as you can see from this slide. So the common selection criteria for any scholarship, as you all know, the academic transcript from your bachelor's study or your postgraduate diploma, normally first class dis or distinction or upper second class. These are the normal condition, but not always the case. And then you need to have your degree, degree certificate and the effective date of the degree. The, there should be two to three independent reference letters. This is very important. The referee reports are very important, part of the selection process. So you had to select the appropriate referees. So this is, again, a, a critical component. And then the English language, the standard uh, Australia always uh, looking for, but they also accept TOEFL in some places. So currently the IELTS is of 6 point academic, 6.5 or above, and it also depends on the courses and also depend on the university. So again, it is not the standard 6.5, so 6.5 is kind of an average. And then you need to provide your CV and your research experience for research degrees. So that I described the essential criteria. Now there are specific selection criteria for certain scholarship. In the case of Australia Award Scholarship, there are very specific criteria you need to satisfy. One is you had to be in a permanent or confirmed employment in government or private departments, probationary lecturers at universities, colleges, or technical institute, and you do not hold another master's degree, and you had to sign an agreement with the Australian government that you, you will be returning back to your country after the study, and you cannot apply for permanent residency or work visa in Australia, at least for two years. And also they consider gender equity and disability uh, it, it, to select the candidates. And also there are priority districts or areas in particular country. I will explain a bit later for Sri Lanka. It also uh, applicable to other countries uh, uh, in the region. So specific selection criteria for Australia Award. So you, you can't just expect that if you have just a first class honors that doesn't make you to get the scholarship. You had to prepare the application uh, to satisfy all the selection criteria. So here you can see for Australia Awards, you have to produce a personal statement. Why do you want to study? And why do you want to study in that particular subject and why do you want to study in Australia? And then you had to have some engagement in community service in your own country, because Australia awards scholarships are looking for candidates who can contribute and develop their own countries and engage with the different stakeholders in the country. And they are looking for certain specific skills and, and uh, attitudes. So you had to provide, for example, program supporting statement. Then you had to provide the details of your proposed study, research or professional development, including the personal and professional benefits that you expect to gain from your Australia Award. And please provide details of how you propose study and how will benefit your home and host countries, including potential for ongoing linkages. And also you have to provide details of your participation in community service, as I mentioned before, outside of your regular studies or employment. It's a very, very comprehensive application process, but if you can satisfy all these criteria and address these criteria, I'm pretty sure you will be successful. Then specific option in Australia Award for Sri Lanka in particular, the Australia Award Scholarship Program will request recognition of peer learning for all scholarship recipients from Sri Lanka. If this request is granted, the recipient may be placed in a degree program 
that may be shorter in duration than what they have originally applied for. For example, the Australia Awards scholarships are also available for sandwich kind of programs. For example, if you registered in, Aust uh, in Sri Lanka for, for a master's or PhD, you can spend some time in Sri Lanka and then you can come to Australia for, for the rest of the time. So Australia Award has two major categories. One is inbound, inbound scholarship for overseas students to study research or development in Australia. Uh, the minimum short term of three months scholarships are available. The maximum is two years at the moment uh, because the, currently the PhD uh, scholarship for Australia Award has been discontinued uh, since 2018. But there are other scholarships, uh, scholarships available for PhD. I will uh, focus on that later. And then the outbound. Outbound scholarships are for Australians to study research and development from overseas. That is also available short term, three months to PhD, uh, which is the one that I have, uh, I have been awarded a uh, few years ago. And Australia awards scholarships are currently offered for masters either coursework degree or research and maximum of two full, full calendar years. Please uh, note this uh, specific criteria. This is the latest uh, information uh, from the Australia Awards point of view. PhD scholarships are currently not offered under the Australia Award program. Australia Awards program has been discontinued for senior staff at the moment. As you may aware, the senior staff also has been awarded Australia Awards for postdoctoral or post uh, professional development uh, activities, but currently it has been uh, discontinued. Australia Award scholarships and Australia Award short courses are offered to selected candidates to undertake postgraduate studies or training or sandwich programs. Eligible candidate must already hold a bachelor's degree. And also the Australia Award scholarship recipients are required to return home for two years after they have completed their studies. So these are the, the key points for the Australian Awards Scholarship point of view. Australia Awards, as you know, is a very highly prestigious international scholarship managed by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs. And uh, Australian Awards Scholarship provide opportunity for candidates from Australia partner countries, mainly in the Asia Pacific region, including Sri Lanka. The targeted fields of study under the Australia Award Scholarship differs from country to country and are determined by the recipient country's human resource and development needs and in accordance with Australia's bilateral program. So there are targeted field of study, uh, the Australian government and the, for example, the Sri Lankan government uh, decide uh, every year which uh, areas they focus for that particular year. So Australia awards contribute to the long-term objective of promoting uh, you know, growth and stability in the region, uh, building the human resource capacity of partner countries, uh, mutually agreed in development sectors. And as you know that Australian government has invested over $300 million uh, for, for this kind of uh, scholarships. And uh, I think uh, uh, about 300,000, sorry, 3,000 Australia Award scholarships uh, uh, and short courses to students from over 15, 55 countries in 2019. So in one year, in 2019, there were about uh, 3,000 Australia Award scholarship from 55 countries. So all recipients of Australia Awards become part of the, the global alumni, then you can have a networking and, and further you know, development pro, uh, activities. And in Sri Lanka also, there is an Australian Global Alum Alumni Association is there. Uh, and also there is an Australia Award Office uh, is in Colombo. Who is eligible for Australia Award Scholarships? Applicants must satisfy both the general eligibility criteria that I already discussed and specific criteria established for each country. So the specific criteria uh, varies from country to country. Applicants will also need to satisfy all requirements of the Australian Department of Home Affairs. So there are 
certain other conditions also need to be satisfied. Applicants who want to accept an Australia Award Scholarship will need to sign a contract with the Commonwealth of Australia declaring that they will comply with the rules and regulation. The one of the condition is you have to go back to your own country at least for two years and failure to do so, then you had to, uh, you know, it's like a bond and agreement. Uh, you had to pay back the, the scholarship uh, amount to the, to the Australian government. Eligibility criteria for Australian government. So you had to be a citizen of, of your own country and you can't have multiple, uh, you know, dual citizens. For example, if you have a citizen with another country, uh, if you have a citizen with Australia, then you can't apply. Uh, but if you are a citizen with UK, for example, you can still apply. Uh, then minimum academic requirement is a bachelor's degree or equivalent. Uh, Mid-level to senior level professional uh, currently employed in a relevant field. So as I mentioned before, you should be a permanent staff member, either probationary or uh, confirmed lecture, lecturers. It's not available for senior staff members and meet relevant postgraduate uh, work experience requirement. Uh, and for Australia Award Scholarship, applicant must be at least 25 years old and not more than 52 years old at the date of application. So these are the age limitation for Australia Award Scholarship. And for specifically for Sri Lanka, applicants from the public sector must have at least three years post-qualification. That been after your bachelor's degree, uh, you should have a three years experience in the public sector uh, uh, departments and with two years in a field relevant to the proposed course of study. And applicants from the private sector and civil society organization must have at least three years post-qualification experience after the bachelor, after bachelor's degree in a field relevant to the proposed course of study. And uh, as I mentioned before, the, the confirmation is not a requirement for for university lecturers or higher, higher educational institution lecturers, uh, because your master's degree is the requirement for your confirmation. So it's an exception for universities, but other public and private departments, their employment uh, sh should have been confirmed uh, in order to apply for the Australia Award Scholarships. So eligibility criteria for Australia Award, so Australia Award Scholarship, applicant must be applying for their first master's degree. For example, if you already have a master's degree, you are not eligible to apply. For Australia Award short courses, applicant must be 25 years as, uh, and 55 years limit. Short courses mean uh, for three months, uh, you know, professional development courses. Um, demonstrate a clear vision of how the knowledge gained through the scholarship will be improve the policy and the practice uh, in the in your home country, and satisfy satisfactory English proficiency, and satisfy all the requirements of the Australian government, uh, and uh, and the appropriate for the student visa uh, subclass 500 student visa. But student visa is not a, a big issue if you get the scholarship. So don't worry about the visa issues uh, at this moment. And award selection criteria, uh, they are looking at professional and personal quality, not only your academic qualities. So your professional, personal qualities, of course, academic competence, and most importantly, your potential to positively contribute to your own country. So that is one of the key component for this award. Applicants are strongly encouraged from eligible women, uh, people with disability, and those working in the disability sector, so they will be given priority in, in say, uh, kind of a 50-50 or some kind of, uh, you know, the, the uh, weightage. And also uh, for this year, uh, the following uh, districts in Sri Lanka has been given priority. So you can see all the North and East uh, districts are given priority for this year, uh, this year and next year scholarships. Uh, including uh, Jaffna, uh, Northern East, and uh, and also Andrajabura, Bolanarua, Badulla, uh, Putalam areas. So this is uh, one of the, the good opportunity for Northern East uh, 
uh, students. And also the Australia Award look at the priority areas of studies for Sri Lanka under Australia Award. And also this also very, uh, will change uh, every year. So for this, uh, this year and next year, the priority areas are given in the slides. So in the health sector, is given priority and you can see a uh, different areas in health sector and priority sector in the stability uh, areas you can see a lot of uh, developmental studies public administration law political science so there are you know a lot of uh, different uh, areas uh, are being considered for this year and next year uh, and for the economic re recovery part and you can see economics, agriculture economics, mathematics, uh, fisheries, uh, tourism. Uh, there are almost all the science, health, law, arts, social science uh, subjects are has been included for this year and next year uh, quota or next year uh, quota for the Australian award for, for Sri Lanka. So if, if, if you are attending from other countries, uh, this will be slightly different. So then you have to uh, look at, uh, you know, Australia Award uh, uh, website to see what are the sectors, uh, what are the areas that your country uh, uh, focus uh, for, for the for next two years. So again, there are country specific condition, uh, even for the IELTS uh, uh, results point of view. And you can see here, if you are working in the priority districts, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the applicants with a disability or those who are working in the disability sector will be considered uh, with the IELTS band of six uh, or even less than five in, uh, you know, in, the, in the individual bands uh, for the application point of view. But if you are successful and then you have to produce the IELTS 6.5. So there are two uh, conditions you can see here. So before, uh, before you apply, you had to have some uh, requirement. And then if you are successful, then you had to produce a minimum 6.5. And all scholarship must be taken up in the year for which they are awarded. You can't postpone your scholarship next year. If you are awarded this year, and you had to follow the, the following year, not to the you know, uh, two, three years later. And should an awardee not be able to come and study in 2002, the scholarship will be withdrawn. So these are the conditions you had to be uh, taken into account before you apply. So what is the process? So these are the very important part, I would say, uh, because you all know, you all may have first class or second class, uh, upper division and, and IELTS, but if you don't, provide the necessary documentation and necessary, you know, the criteria, satisfy the criteria, then you won't get it. So please focus on this aspect. It's very, very comprehensive application. Uh, it's only for the Australia Award. For the other scholarships are very easy. I, I will explain a bit later. The university scholarships or the RPS scholarships, are they, that's very, very easy. But this Australia Award, scholarships are very, very comprehensive. Then uh, you had to prepare the application and satisfy all the condition and criteria. And you had to get the proofread by an independent person before you apply and, and submit an application, then attend an interview. So there is an interview process also part of the Australia Award uh, Scholarship. So applications are online application. So you can't submit paper copies. And you had to attach supporting documents. The documents had to be certified by the JP or the lawyer. Please take this very, uh, this very important because the certifying official should possess an official stamp with address and contact details for cross verification. For example, if you certi certify with the justice of peace and if the JP doesn't have the the telephone number or the uh, email address or the you know the uh, address then your application will be rejected because the the australian embassy 
will verify with the lawyer whether the document is uh, certified correctly. So please be in mind, there are each and every step you should follow. If you made a mistake somewhere, then your application will be rejected. And it's very, very uh, comprehensive uh, and very tough process. So these are the checklist uh, for the Australia award application. So you can see here, uh, tertiary degree certificate, uh, the, uh, your undergraduate certificate, you need to uh, certify that, certify it as a true copy. And academic grades, academic transcript, yes, you need to certify. And either passport or national identity card uh, to show that you are the citizen of your own country, you had to certify that. And your birth certificate to prove that the your place of birth, for example, if you are given a priority uh, district quota, then it will be helpful. And you had to pro provide your CV and CV you don't need to certify. So please note that you, you don't need to certify your CV or the, or the development impact plan. For example, you prepare your own documents, you don't need to certify. You only need to certify the, the important certificates and identity uh, passport and birth certificate, etc. And uh, certificate of special achievement or merit, for example, you get some award uh, in the undergraduate degree, uh, you don't need to certify. And IELTS exams, yes, you need to certify that document. And for the master's coursework applicants, uh, one academic referee report and one professional referee report important. So you had to get the report from two different uh, you know, uh, category of people, one academic uh, supervisor and one your professional referee. So professional referee means uh, either your employer or your immediate supervisor. Uh, your academics uh, referee means your teacher, you know, for example, your undergraduate uh, lecturer. Uh, for the master's research applicants, there should be two academic referee reports and one professional referee report. Please make note of these important things. For example, if you submit only three academic reports, your application will be rejected. And if you don't submit, you know, so you have to follow the each and every step according to the instruction. And the other important document for master's research applicant, a research proposal, uh, that research proposal, you don't need to certify. It. And also you had to produce your employment letter uh, that you have, you know, the appointment letter or your, your work service letter. And that also you don't, that you don't need to certify. And any other document you wish to upload, you can, upload any other documents that you want that will not be considered for the, for the application point of view. But, you know, for example, if there are two applicants getting equal marks, say 50-50, then they will consider your additional documentation. So if you have some additional things, you can still attach uh, and, and make your application very strong. So the application templates are available in this web link, Australia Award Sri Lanka.org. So if you go to the website, everything is in the website. So if you spend some time, it's take time. It's not one day job. It's probably take one week or two weeks. You know, it's, it's a very comprehensive uh, document, uh, document preparation uh, process. So, <clears throat> and also for the referee reports in different formats cannot be accepted as you can see, the, uh, uh, the referee reports also, there are specific for formats. So if you submit in a different format, it will be, it will be rejected. And once you submitted your application, then they will shortlist for, you for the interview. So interview also is one of the key component of the selection product or process only for the Australia Award Scholarship. For other scholarship, there is no interview. Why? Because this is very comprehensive and uh, have a lot of perks and a lot of immunities and, you know, it's a very comprehensive scholarship. So at the interview, there are three to four panel members. It's very, very independent process. They are not your friends. Uh, they are not your relatives and they are not your enemies either. So one officer from the Australian government, uh, mainly from the Australian embassy in that particular country, 
a representative from your own country, country's government, uh, from a Ministry of uh, Education or uh, UGC or Higher Education, an independent consultant or academic from one of the you know independent person, and one person from the Australia Award alumni. So there are many alumni uh, uh, awardees are in Sri Lanka, so they will select one person. So you can see here, all members are very independent. They know each other. So they are not friends each other. So you can see how the system is very independent to select the right candidate without any bias or conflict of interest or favorism or nepotism. Or, it's all eliminated very nicely in this process. If you can make a very successful application, I am sure you will be successful. So please note all these very important step, very fair process. So interviews are face-to-face. Uh, during this COVID time, there may be exemption. Also include a written component. Sometimes they may ask you to write some small written document. And approximately the interview take 30 minutes. There is a standardized process is followed consistently. So there is no favor to any candidates. So interview questions. So they are not going to ask you question from, from the moon. So they are going to ask you the question from the application itself. How you prepare your application and how you address your criteria and how you look at the Australia award criteria, information, et cetera. So they want, you to, they want to check you whether you are really prepared the application and whether you are really interested to do the studies whether you are going to contribute to your own countries. So they are going to check you on the, based on your application. So it's a very simple, your understanding of your studies in Australia, just do some Google research and see how the things happening in Australia and what are the challenges and opportunities? What are the development issues of your country? Uh, and for example, if you apply from your own department, say so, sociology, what, what are the issues there and how you're going to improve the sociology department. And your career and achievements, how, how you achieve in your career. And also they are going to look at you, the leadership potential, how you are going to contribute and how you are going to lead and plans to contribute to the development of your country and preparation and practice is critical for the interview point of view. Just look at this key points and, and prepare for the interview. Interview will be a very fair interview. Interview tips. So do your research and review your application. Visit relevant website, Australia Awards, uh, southwestasia.org, provide uh, lots of information. And also you can anticipate questions by looking at the focus of the awards and the selection criteria. So you had to focus the awards criteria, et cetera. And practice saying your answers out loud and identify examples for, for each and every criteria. For example, a leadership, you had to produce some examples in the interview, how you lead in your career, how you lead something in your career, how you initiate, how you initiate, for example, a new degree program, how you solve challenges. So you had to produce some examples, your practical example in your lifetime. So they will look at, you can't say example from somebody else example. You have to, they will immediately, you know, recognize that you are telling your own example or somebody else example. So examples are very important when you attend interviews. Do your research of Australia and Australian higher educational system. That is also important. They will ask you whether you done the homework. So this is one of the, the web link, uh, www.studyinaustralia.gov.au. And also universities in higher education. And you can see how they rank the ranking system, uh, list of Australian universities and various research institutes. Sometimes you have to do the research in the research institute, not in the university. So even, even though the university is affiliated, but the research is being done in the research institute. For example, if someone coming for medical physics research, 
they will come to my institute here at the research cancer institute to do research at the same time they are affiliated to the university so you had to investigate so if you go for medical related or engineering related then you had to do the research outside the university because there are no equipments in the universities to do research for, for medically related things and also you need to understand the the university ranking so how many universities rank top in the world so they may ask question like that and comfortable and confident to be successful and also uh, if you have any disability or particular needs you can contact the australia airport office and they will arrange uh, things accordingly and as usual you all know you have to arrive the interview uh, ahead of time and other interview tips i think you probably know you know how you attend interviews great the interview panel with eye contact and a smile these are the human nature right when you meet the interview panel the first impression is important whether they are assessing you based on that is a different thing because um, you know if some two people are in the same level then they will look at these factors also so you have to show yourself and sell yourself you have to sell yourself pay attention to all members of the panel don't look at only one person so you have to look at all the panel members uh you know in a in a equal way be professional in your manner and you know these are the very uh, for any interview this is not only for the australia award for any interview there are certain uh things you need to do on top of your technical scientific uh, whatever skills these skills are also important for the interview point of view um and also you can ask question opportunity to ask question so in the interviews you can ask question freely so they are not your enemies they are not your friends so you can ask any question that you have they are happy to answer and thanks the panel members for their time and the opportunity uh now finally the australia award benefits what are the benefits that you will get so australia award scholarships are award for the uh, minimum period necessary for the individual to complete the academic program uh including any preparatory training and they cover everything so you don't need to spend a single cent from your own pocket so return air travel uh, of course is economy class uh, air travel uh, one of establishment allowance uh, on arrival uh, i think roughly 5000 or 6000 uh, I, i don't know exactly this is uh, not always the similar amount so i don't want to tell you the right amount uh, full tuition fees Uh, contributing to the living expenses uh, including your family members uh, introductory academic program uh, overseas student health cover health insurance uh, supplementary academic support uh, for you know for any any uh, field work or any sort of you know traveling uh, field allowance for research and masters course it's very very comprehensive in, uh, uh, scholarship successful applicants then you need to uh, they also provide this additional uh, support preparatory training uh, for successful applicants course counseling pre departure briefing university introductory academic program other required preparatory study they, uh, everything they will be provided and a case manager will be appointed for each uh, successful applicant a case manager individually will be appointed to help throughout the award for the for example if you study here for 2 years for the 2 years you will be uh, having a one case manager he or she will look after you for any single matter uh, in the in that period um so this is uh, one of the sri lankan uh, australia award experience uh, uh, you know the, the alumni uh, I, you can read uh, and understand how uh how he has the experience with australia award so more than just the theories we taught i could learn more about practical engineering by observing and acquiring australian archi uh, architectural concept although the sri lankan educational system provides students with knowledge and theories the difference in australia is they are more practical based especially in the field of structural engineering so these are the some comments from the sri lankan award holders so these are the contact details for sri lankan applicants uh, so the 
you know, the office uh, in the contact the Australia Airport office for Sri Lanka and Maldives uh, in King Street Road, Colombo 6, oh, sorry, Colombo 8, uh, and the telephone number and the emails. So you can get any information you want. They are happy to provide all the information. So please feel free to ask. And there is also an Australia Award Alumni Office office in, in Sri Lanka uh, at the Sananayaka Mahavatta in Colombo. Uh, I don't know whether Colombo you can search. Uh, this is the telephone number and also they have a website. So in this lecture, I got uh, many information from this uh, Australia Award Scholarship Policy Handbook and also from the uh, Australian Foreign Ministry websites. Um, so up to now, I have uh, clearly explained you about the Australian Award Scholarships and, uh, and, and the related matters. Now, the, there are, as I mentioned before, there are three major scholarships for studying for in Australia as an international student. One is the Australia Award Scholarship. The other one is Australian Universities Individual Scholarships. And the other one is RTP Training Scholarship provided by the Australian government. So RTP uh, scholarships only for the research students. And uh, Australia awards scholarships, both taught course students and research students up to master's level. And Australian universities individual scholarships are for masters and PhDs. So these are the, some of the individual university scholarships I have, uh, uh, I have given here in this uh, slide, but each and every university has their own international scholarships. So these are some of the, the best examples and they, they provide a very, very good uh, scholarship uh, in some universities. As I mentioned before, each university is independent and the scholarships are also uh, varies across the universities. And this is another uh, example, University of Melbourne uh, graduate research scholarships. Uh, in this scholarship, you can see also provide uh, tuition fee waiver, living allowance, relocation grant. So it is also a bit comprehensive, you can see. Uh, but the previous uh, University of Sydney is not that comprehensive. But this University of Melbourne is a bit com more comprehensive than the other one. So there is no uh, <clears throat> relationship between the university's uh, uh, individual scholarships point of view. Uh, and then uh, you can see the Adelaide uh, Excellence International Scholarship Flinders International Postgraduate Scholarship. So these are, you have to go through the individual universities. There are 42 universities and find out <coughs> the individual scholarship provided by the, the, the particular universities. So I don't want to go through that. I can't give 42 universities uh, scholarship, but these are the, some, some examples. Uh, and this is a University of New South Wales International Scholarships. Uh, <coughs> So you can see it varies uh, uh, with, with, with the different universities. And this is another important uh, web link. Uh, you can see studying in australia.scholarship. So if you go to that link, then you can find uh, many, many uh, information. Finally, uh, good luck with the application. If you prepare well, if you address all the selection criteria, doesn't matter whether you get first class, so second upper, you will get it. So first class doesn't mean you will get the scholarship. This is one of my best experience and knowledge I'm giving. So prepare your application, spend some time, read all the documentation, provide all the required documents. There is a high chance to get that scholarship. Good luck. Any questions, I am happy to answer. Thank you very much for your wonderful insights on postgraduate opportunities in Australia, sir. Uh, dear participants, if you have any questions or point of clarification, you may directly ask doctor. Uh, he's very happy to answer your questions or you may send your questions via chat box. While chat box or even you can send yeah, to me by answer. email later, later, not now. If you have any question later, you can also contact me. I'm happy to help you, provide you, advise you how to succeed. Because I, I was one of the successful in the Australia Award Scholarship. So I know how things work and I know how to be successful. So I'm happy to provide each and every step if you have any, any doubts or clarification.
please feel free to ask question i am not your supervisor i am not your teacher i am not your boss so you can freely ask questions uh, yes sir i have a questions i am from jaffna yep uh, i'm sorry i i i